Hello there, you're watching Dansky and this is the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn seven different ways you can distort shapes in Adobe Illustrator. So you can see I've got some examples on screen. I know there's six, you know, seven would throw off the alignment and everything, so I went with six. But there are seven different options and you can find them all up here under Effect and distort and transform. So these are the seven distort effects we're going to be looking at. And by the end of this video, you'll understand each of these different effects and how you can use them to distort your own shapes. So here's a nice selection of some of the effects that we can create. And we'll just delete those. And we've got a heart. So if you're thinking, oh, I wish you would show us how to draw the heart instead, that's much more interesting. Don't worry, there's a link down in the description and hopefully on screen that will take you to a video if you'd like to learn how to draw a heart instead but definitely come back after because this one's worth watching. Okay, so we have a heart to start with and this can be any shape. I've just chosen a heart uh, for this tutorial. And we can select this, go to effect, down to distort and transform and we'll start at the top, free distort. Now what this will do is it will bring up a dialog box and it will have your shape with four corner points as well. And effectively this is exactly what it says. It allows you to distort free of charge. No, I'm, I'm kidding. It allows you to distort your shape just freely. So you can just kind of pull these around and you can see it really does skew that perspective or you can reset it and start again. So if I go and distort this like so and click okay, you can see I've got that distort effect. Now the, it actually remembers the original heart position. This is just an effect that we're applying. So as with all of the effects, that we're gonna add in this video. If you select your shape and go to the appearance panel, either on the right or up here, you'll see that it adds the effect as an item in this list and you can turn that off or on, or you can drag it to the trash if you'd like to get rid of it or click it and then go back and edit it. Now, because this is just an effect, we're not actually editing the physical path of the shape. So if you press Command or Control Y, it'll take you into outline mode. And you can see here that the heart is very much still exactly the same, but it just has that effect applied over it. So with any of the effects that we apply today, if you would like to have the path of your shape actually match the physical appearance, just make sure it's selected and that you're happy. Go to object and down to expand appearance. And you can see there now the path actually matches the appearance of the shape. Cool, so that's free distort. And let's move on to the next one. So effect, distort and transform, pucker and bloat. Now effectively what pucker and bloat does, bloat is where it will quite literally bloat your shape. It will push it outwards from the center and pucker is the opposite. So it will suck it in towards the center. So we can tick the preview box here. So that's really handy to see that change in real time. And we can move this to the right. So you can see that even at 25%, we get some uh, really bizarre shapes. It kind of looks like the shape of a Pokemon or something. And you can do this really subtly. And you can go to the absolute extreme and create some really kind of crazy patterns depending on what you're going for. And of course, this effect will look considerably different depending on the shape that you're working with. So pucker goes in towards the center. So there you go. If you're looking to create some kind of really cool emblem, looks a bit, bit kind of a bit witcher. Yeah, I like it. Or you can go again to the complete extreme and, uh, and distort it as far as you like. But you know, depending on what you're going for, that's pucker and bloat. Now the next one we're going to look at is roughen. Now this is my, one of my personal favorites, I think, because it's just super cool. So if we tick that preview box and you can select relative or absolute, they do change the appearance. I'm not technically sure of the difference between the two, but as with anything in Illustrator, if you can tick a preview box and you don't know what the options do specifically, just play around, you know, mess around with some options and physically see how that affects uh, your design in real time. So we can increase this. So this will adjust the size and you can adjust the detail as well. So if we bring the detail up, you can see there's a lot more kind of spikes around the edge. It's a lot rougher. 
and we could bring that down, but you can also smooth out the corners. Now this is quite subtle, so you might need to zoom in to see the smooth effect, but you can have sharp corners or you can have slightly smooth corners. But the reason I like this one so much is that you can use this to create, create, <laughs> to create a new word there, create, to uh, create some really subtle effects. So if I just click okay on this, you can see there I've turned something that is a very clean heart shape and just given it a kind of a little bit more of a kind of handcrafted feel, a bit rough around the edges, quite literally. So for someone like me who has a very clean style, if I'm going for something a bit more kind of handcrafted, a bit rougher, this effect allows me to take my design and then apply this to it. And as I say, with all the effects that we're doing, these are listed under here. So I've still got that free distort I'm actually going to delete now, but you can see here, Roughen is also listed. So we can switch that on, off, go back and edit it. So we've got lots and lots of flexibility there. So that's Roughen, which is awesome. Next, we've got Transform. Now this is pretty cool as well. You can tick the preview box and you can adjust the scale. So the, this is kind of like one dialog box that you can control multiple things in. And you can adjust the scale both horizontally and vertically. So you can do it with sliders all from here. You can move it as well, up and down, and you can even rotate it. So all those transform things that you get within Illustrator or Photoshop, all within this one box, which is good. And we've got some other options down here. So you can reflect it along the X or the Y axis, or you can have it just set to random and you can transform objects. So lots of other options here. As I say, I've not played around with these too much. This isn't a feature I use all the time, but I'm just clicking these boxes and I've got preview ticked so I can see what effect it's having on my shape. You can adjust the registration here. So whether it's kind of anchored to the center, the top right, the bottom right, and you can actually add copies as well. So if we add five, or maybe 10, and we can adjust the positioning it's created all of these different copies on top of our shape. So you can see there's lots of different options there for kind of messing around and creating shapes, but depending on your specific shape and what you're going to use this for, you might get something slightly different. But that is the transform effect. Okay, we're gonna go on to tweak now. So we'll tick that preview box. And this is similar to Ruffin, so again, you can adjust relative or absolute and it will adjust the appearance accordingly. And you can adjust the vertical and horizontal amount. So this does uh, something slightly different, but it is kind of creating that kind of rougher edge as well. And you've got these other options down here. And remember, as I say, if you don't know what they mean specifically, then just click around and see how it changes the appearance of your shapes. For example, modify anchor points. It will kind of keep those anchor points in position if you don't have it checked and it will bend the shape around them. But if you select anchor points with that tick there, what it will do is it will actually modify the position of the anchor points to kind of suit the effect that is being created. So that is tweak. And next we've got twist. This is another one that I really, really like because you can tick the preview box and you can type in or use the arrows to adjust the angle and it will quite li literally twist it around a point. <laughs> so you can go to the absolute extreme if you want and you can create something, you know, so it doesn't even look like a heart anymore. It is just totally random. And you can do that both to the right or clockwise and counterclockwise direction. So we can go into negative as well. And you can see it goes the other way. So that is twist. And the last one is zigzag. So let's tick that preview box. Again, relative or absolute. And you can adjust the size. I think relative seems to be a little bit more kind of emphasized, absolute a bit more subtle and you can adjust the size. You can go for something totally over the top if you want, or you can have something really subtle like that with smooth corners or sharper corners. 
and zigzag is actually very similar to roughen as well. But what you can really do is add lots and lots of ridges and you can create something like this. So where this is slightly different is roughen is very much, it will roughen the shape and make it just a kind of a less perfect, less smooth. The zigzag effect can actually be used to create, um, well, you know, literally a zigzag around the edge of your shape. So you can create things like spikes and uh, the effect itself is applied a bit more consistently. Whereas roughen is quite literally just roughening around the edges of your shape. So you can see lots of different effects. And then once, you've, once you're happy with that, again, we just need to kind of take that path and make sure it matches the physical appearance of our shape. And we can do that by selecting it, going to object and expand appearance. And you can see there in outline mode, remember that's command or control Y. The path now matches the shape. And the only downside to this is that it's no longer listed under the appearance panel and you can't edit the effect any further. So my advice would be if you're going to expand it, just keep a copy of this editable in case you do want to tweak that effect later on. And there we go. Those are seven different distort effects that you can apply to shapes in Adobe Illustrator. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.